Close it down. Hello, Phantom fans. My name is Sam Olmstead. His name is Justin Irwin. Or this is the Dump and Chase podcast. And due to the Phantom's first round playoff exit, this is also our season four finale. So this episode is brought to you by the fine folks at Advanced Podiatry. For services provided and treatments offered, office locations and appointment information, check out advancedpodiatry.com. So thank you everyone for tuning in this week, either on Western Reserve Radio, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. So, Justin, um, I guess this is what we're going to call take two here. <laughs> uh, OK, yeah, we'll try to try to stay on script today. Um, we had recorded this uh, for last week to release. Um, it was a jumbled mess, uh, was way longer than we ever intended on it being. And for the benefit of just humanity in general, uh, we were not going to put that dreck out for everyone to hear. So. Uh, this is take two. We're doing this all over again. Not, I don't think this is the first time we've had to do this. Yeah, I, we, we've done it a couple other times. Probably won't be the last. Yeah. So, um, I mean, as far as this season, it wasn't the ending we were hoping for. But I mean, in, in the end, unlike last season, we didn't kind of have this doom and gloom sense uh, once the season ended. No, um, I mean, it was a little bit on the sudden side. We hope for a little bit more. Yeah. After last season, almost anything was going to be better. Yep. So uh, just as a programming note, um, our draft recap episodes will be coming out soon. Uh, we've just about got everything finalized for those, including uh, some special guests that will be helping us out with that episode. So make sure uh, you're on the lookout for that. And just randomly, I want to mention Lincoln drafted a kid named uh, Boston Buckberger. Boston Buckberger. That's wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was the name of the draft. Yeah. <laughs> There were some good ones this there, year. There were some, some good, yeah, good there were some good names, but Boston Buckberger. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I think pretty much everybody following the draft focused in on that yeah. one name, and <laughs> uh, so that'll be fun for them to talk about. Uh, yeah, so as far as this episode, we're going to look back on this season. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the more interesting stories about some of the players from this past year. Uh, we'll also have the results of our preseason predictions that we did. And, uh, you know, a lot of thank yous to hand out as well. So at the conclusion of last season, the Phantoms had 12 wins. Players were jumping ship left and right. Personnel changes behind the bench and elsewhere were on the horizon. And it was right after uh, the day after tryout camp last June you know, Brad Patterson was relieved of his GM role. You know, they brought in Jason Deskins and Ryan Kosecki to take over as co-general managers. We would see longtime assistant coach Jeff Potter, uh, assistant coach Justin DiMartino was gone. You know, they would be replaced by uh, Andy Contois and Brandon Gotkin. I mean, so just a lot of news going on, you know, and then we started seeing some trades and everything, so everything else before the season even started. Obviously, we were in a transition. You could kind of see where they were going. Obviously, we were getting rid of um, players who didn't want to be here. So, you know, yeah, um, you'll have this sometimes. And I guess um, it was our turn. Uh, and, you know, at least we saw good results from it uh, at the end of the season. Yeah, it's we before the season start, you know, we saw a major roster turnover once the season started and then. From the course of the beginning to the beginning of the season to the end of the season, 11 players that were on that opening day roster were no longer with the team by the time the season was over. Yeah, again, I mean, at the end of the season, though, you you saw what the game plan was. Um, so and at least I think this season we had a good game plan. Uh, we'll see where that goes in the off season. So so we got a handful of points as far as this season that uh, we want to hit on. Of course, the, the first being the most obvious uh, compared to the season before. This was a 17 win, 37 point improvement for the Phantoms. We knew it couldn't get worse, that it had to start getting better. I don't think, at least at the beginning of the season, that it was anywhere near our heads that it would be that much better. Yeah, I mean, I think we were hoping to be at least around 500 at the end of the season, you know, hoping to, you know, maybe make one of the bottom playoff spots. And yeah, we we I think exceeded our expectations by a, a good deal there, um, especially yet yeah, with those wins. 
Another part that was a big story on the season, that was the Phantom's penalty kill. It was kind of a tale of two years um, up into from the beginning of the season up until December 31st, which was 26 games. The penalty kill was at 69.3%, giving up 27 power play goals, being shorthanded uh, 88 times. When the calendar flipped to 2022 until the end of the season, which was 36 games, the penalty kill in that span was 88.3%, only allowing 14 power play goals, being shorthanded 100 120 times. This is where, I mean, we're re-recording, so I have to remember that uh, the first time we recorded this was the first time you actually threw that stat out to yeah. me, and I can remember sitting there going, wow, that is kind of a, a huge jump there. But like I said, I mean, at least we knew what the game plan was, and that was going to be defense first. And obviously, we had to get better on the penalty kill. Yeah, another point... The success the Phantoms had this year against four teams that in the past handful of years has absolutely not been the case. And that was Muskegon, Chicago, Team USA, and Green Bay. Youngstown against those four teams this season ended up going 23-10, 3-2. And these are four teams, as of late, Youngstown has not been good against. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at some of those games against the NTDP, I guess uh, the U18s, especially that uh, Kids' Day game, it was amazing um, what we did, you know, defensively again, and shut some of the better offenses in the league down completely. Yeah, and we talked about before that school day game. I think the 18s had scored like 40-something goals in their previous four games before that, and I think they scored another 30-something goals in the three games after that. But that school day game, the Phantoms held them to two. Yeah, so, um, you know, you look at some of the top players, uh, Adam Fentilli. I can remember him in fits because... He couldn't figure Jacob Fowler out. Contrast that, the Phantoms uh, did struggle. Uh, Dubuque, Madison, in more ways than one by the time the season was over in Cedar Rapids. Those three teams, the Phantoms were a combined 6-11, 3-2. I mean, and, and Dubuque's to be expected. It just kind of it just kind of worked out that way over the past few years. You know, Madison will discuss a little bit later, I guess. Yeah. Um, that was maybe a little bit of a surprise. The Cedar Rapids, that was a lot of early in the season. We did not do well, especially against them. We kind of figured it out later on in the season, but um, that was kind of a, one of the disappointments on the season, I think, was our performance there. I think we could have done better against Cedar Rapids. So when it was all said and done, of course, the Phantoms make the playoffs. They get the four seed. Uh, they get the first round matchup with Madison. Just the story of both those games. You know, the Phantoms were holding leads later in the game, had leads later in the game, but could not hold them. You know, end up getting swept by Madison, who currently, as we're speaking, is in the Eastern Conference Finals. Madison knocked Chicago out, which, uh, hee hee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> You know the old adage, if we can't beat them, nobody else better. Uh, yes. Uh, and then maybe a little bit of uh, tee for what's going on in the Western Conference. Yeah, that's uh, Tri-City uh, Tri City and Sioux City. Sioux City currently, as we're recording, is up two games to none on Tri-City. But yeah, Madison is in the Eastern Conference Finals uh, as we're recording this. But we would have liked to have seen a better showing, but just it was just... Simon Latkozy has just been the thing that Youngstown couldn't solve all season, and they really didn't in this playoff series as well. No, and we couldn't shore it up enough to prevent those, you know, third period comebacks. And um, this was in our barn, and uh, we should have been able to do this. So, I mean, it's something we have to work on, I think, for next year. So as a matter of a question of what what went right and what went wrong with this season, I think it also comes to the question, were the Phantoms better this year than they were last year? And the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, certain aspects, they were better. Certain aspects, uh, they were not. No, and again, that's something that has to be addressed. Um, but I think the areas that we improved on were the areas we had to work on first. Well, you know, last season, uh, the 2021 season, uh, the Phantoms back end, as far as the defense, goaltending, whatnot, the Phantoms gave up 4.45 goals a game. Uh, this past season, that dropped to 3.21. That was a goal and a quarter 
per game drop from the season before. The penalty kill uh, last season was 73.9% and the season we just completed, they were up to 80.3%. That was a 6.5% difference, 6.5% rise from the season before. So obviously by leaps and bounds, the defense got a lot better than they had been. I almost want to say ever. I wouldn't go there, but... Um, Close. It, yeah, uh, it would be too subjective, but um, yeah. when you look at overall, especially some of our defensive pairings, yeah, this was as good as we've seen in a long time. Um, as far as where the problems lied with this season, and it was a season long thing, it was from game one to game 62 going into the playoffs was the offense. Um, in the 2021 season, the Phantoms averaged 2.96 goals per game. Uh, this past season, they w raised that to only 3.08. That's a 0.12 more goals per game than it was the season before. The Phantoms power play in 2021 finished up with tw at 20.7%. This last year, they finished with 19.1%. So they actually dropped like one and a half percent. But yeah, in an Eastern Conference, you know, even though you're playing defense as well as you are in an Eastern Conference that's averaging almost four goals a game for the rest of the conference to only average uh, not even 3.1 goals per game, you're going to win some games based on your defense. You're not going to get very far otherwise. Yeah, and obviously this came back to haunt us, uh, especially when you historically get off to slow starts. So, and then, you know, like I said, we we didn't finish well in the playoffs. I, I think, you know, we missed chances at times. I, I think, yeah, that has to be scoring, especially secondary scoring, I think has to be something we address going forward. So with that, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to look back on some of the players and what we felt were the biggest stories from this roster. So stick around right here on Western Reserve Radio. Miss an episode of By All Means, and you could miss a lot. I have the sound up, and I appreciate the guys that do the work now. But it is uh, with great appreciation I see what the guys do, not only the announcers, but also the players. So we've had wonderful playoffs. I mean, single, double, triple overtime games. It's been fantastic. By All Means, Tuesdays at 5, right here on Western Reserve Radio and streaming live on westernreserveradio.com. Welcome back to the Dump and Chase podcast brought to you by Advanced Podiatry. Uh, so in this segment, basically what we want to do, we want to talk about a handful of the players. Uh, the players we felt uh, were some of the bigger stories of the year. So starting off right off the bat, uh, Jaden Grant. You know, the story last season was was that uh, the trade deadline was coming up. Jaden was coming off an injury. He wasn't having that great of a season. You know, he felt that, you know, his time in Youngstown was coming to an end and Apparently, he was the only one that felt that way. People within the organization we talked to was basically of the opinion he must be crazy if that's what he thinks, because he's the only one. And like we saw the player he became at the end of the season and then coming into this season right off the bat, first game of the season out in Cranberry, he was named team captain. Yeah, this did not come as any surprise. Last season, yeah, you mentioned it. He thought he might be one of the players getting traded. Um, otherwise he was one of the few positive attitude players that we had. He was out there working, uh, you know, just trying to get his ice time. I think, you know, hard work obviously is something any organization values. Um, I remember start the season, he was one of our first interviews, you know, we're, we're talking about, or no, hold on no, back we, up. We, yeah. We were talking yeah, to Brad. We, we interviewed him. And then the next night, we took uh, the question we had asked yeah. Brad in the post game uh, presser or whatever was about Jaden and him being the captain and everything else. And he gave this glowing review of Jaden. And then once we were done with that and we're leaving the Cavelli Center, there's Jaden out in the hallway just ran running random stick drills with a stick and a ball. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting to probably, you know, for a ride or I don't know. Yeah. Just hanging out in the hallway. What? Probably at least 40 minutes after the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, doing stick drills with the ball in the hallway. 
Yeah. And and there and now you didn't you didn't always go into the back after games. Uh, I mean, countless other times he's out there with Kenta. Yeah. Half an hour, 40 minutes after the game, he's out there running stri- uh, stick drills with Kenta. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean, this is why he's he's captain. Yeah. Um. Another um. another player, of course, Adam Ingram, you know, uh, basically a rookie in the USHL this year. He ended up losing. He led most of the season in rookie points in the league. He ended up losing it to Dylan James from Sioux City, who uh, played when it was all said and done with injuries and illness at the end of the season for Adam. Uh, James played like eight more games than Adam did, but only ended up uh, beating him by six points. Yeah. And I, I think um, he's still the top ranked non NTDP player uh, on NHL's central scouting report. So yeah, he was the 27th ranked skater, uh, North American skater. And that's the highest USHL ranking for uh, non NTDP players. Yeah. So, um, and I think that's the highest I've seen a phantom ranked since Kyle Connor. So yeah, the mid, the mid season, he was like 14th or so, but, Again, with those injuries at the end of the year, kind of dropped everything off and uh, dropped his positioning there. But yeah, he I mean, he was somebody came in, scored in the very first game and a couple little lulls, not that big of a deal, but he had a couple little lulls. But I mean, he's somebody who consistently produced from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, especially coming in out of junior A and I mean, he was kind of not on anybody's radar. So really a surprise from the start. Another player is Winter Wallace, you know, and the the line we had about Winter uh, towards the end of the season was we had that uh, the Phantoms had to beat the Western Conference out of him. <laughs> you know, he's a big guy. He isn't afraid to throw his weight around. I guess it was just a matter of learning to throw his weight around in a way more pleasing to the referees, but at the same time, pick up his offensive game uh, with only being 49 games last season, 62 this, uh, this season. But, you know, had 12 points last season, 30 points this season. You know, finishing, you know, towards the top of the Phantoms leaderboard as far as scoring this season really found his offensive touch. And by the end of the season, it was like we were watching a completely different player. Yeah, I mean, uh, this happens, especially I think sometimes with the larger players, they get pigeonholed into you have to play this way or that way, especially like you mentioned, Winter Wallace coming out of the Western Conference. Yeah, I once he got comfortable uh, with his style of play in Youngstown, um, it was night and day, uh, especially on the penalties. You know, then uh, moving more, now more towards the back end, uh, TJ Schweighart and Trey Taylor. The pairing that those two made, and I think maybe the thing that hurt the Phantoms a little bit going down the stretch is you had Trey injured at one point, uh, and he wasn't out there for a little while. And then once he came back, then TJ went out um, and really didn't come back until, you know, the very end of the season. But I mean, once those two, once TJ came over in that trade with Cedar Rapids and the two of them were paired together, I mean, it was just electric watching those two, you know, that pairing out there on the ice game in and game out. Yeah, I mean, TJ came in, he had the experience. Um, I mean, you know, Trey, his first year in the USHL, exceeded any expectation we had at the beginning of the season, uh, only got better as things went on. And yeah, once you teamed him up with, um, you know, the the veteran player uh, and TJ, it was one of the best uh, defensive pairings I think I've seen in the league, um, bar none. I mean, both of them right off the bat. I mean, they're shut down defenders. You know, they were both disciplined. Uh, Trey only had eight penalty minutes in 53 games. TJ, 29 penalty minutes in 46 games. But I think TJ's all came... uh, (laughs) in a one big block there you know Trey led the team in plus minus that's you know your defenseman that's probably out there playing you know 25 26 minutes a game double shifting playing on the penalty kill playing on the power play you know going out there against other teams top lines and you're talking Chicago's top lines Muskegon's top lines the U18s and he ends the season as a plus 14 yeah that's unheard of and then you put on top of that you know his point production which, you know, set team records. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, Trey, you know, set the Phantoms record for most points in a season by defenseman with 43. Um, He tied the record for most goals in a season with 10. Yeah, so not only did you have that they were both shut down defenders, you also had Trey, who was this, you know, complete, you know, 200 foot, you know, three way player. 
So, I, I mean, that in a package in this league um, is something at least the Phantoms have not seen very often, if at all. Yeah, keeping with the back end, the goaltending, Kyle Chavette and Jacob Fowler. You know, we had Owen Bartoskevich at the beginning of the season. At the beginning of the season, moving from the Nall up to the USHL, you know, you kind of saw him, you saw him struggling in the way that we saw Kyle Chavette struggle the year before. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as the season went on and then you got into that COVID weekend, you know, where basically everyone had COVID, somehow those two games with Cedar Rapids got played. Uh, Bartoskevich played both of those games and only gave up like the one goal in both games. And you started seeing to a point where he was getting comfortable, but then he took off to, you know, the University of Minnesota. That's when Jacob Fowler came up, you know, and you kind of had Kyle Chavette holding down the fort for the first half of the season. And then once Fowler came up, you know, you kind of saw him kind of take over that role, you know, and he was the one that was I mean, and this isn't a knock towards Kyle at all, but I think Jacob was the one that more, you know, that more carried the weight in the second half of the season from like January on for the team. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those things that, um, you know, especially you mentioned the um, COVID weekend. It seemed like, you know, after Chauvet came back from that, he just was not as solid as he was um, the previous couple of months. Uh, To start the season, he was lights out. So, yeah, Bartoskevich gets called up to NCAA Anybody here would be lying if they said that they weren't a little worried about calling up a 17-year-old from prep. Yeah. Uh, And this goes to people that we've talked to inside the Phantoms organization. And yeah, uh, I've never seen a a call-up that confident from the get-go. Of course, you know, we mentioned plenty of times, we'll mention again, of course, Jacob Fowler you know, ended up with two shutouts on the season and those shutouts were only what, eight days apart, nine days apart. Yeah. Almost had a th- uh, uh, shutout Chicago, which was the first time that had happened in about three or four years by an Eastern Conference team. Uh, shuts out Chicago and then there towards the end of the season, almost shut him out again, if not for Chicago scoring with eight seconds left in that game. Yeah. Uh, which have which burned the Phantoms more in a few times this season, which is those late period goals as in less than 10 seconds left in the period. <sighs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So and obviously he after that, he seemed uh, like he wanted that third shutout. Um, yeah. I think he was vocal about that. Yes, he was. Um, so, yeah. And I mean, like I said, just his confidence from the moment he came in, especially we noticed it first game, his puck handling. Um, he's almost like having a, another defenseman back there at times uh, clearing the puck. And then just some honorable men. I, I, I wish I could sit here and name every single person on the roster. And that's kind of what I did the last time. So not going to do it this time. But ju- I mean, just some honorable mentions, you know, Kyle Bettens, Byard Hall, uh, Nick Williams, Grant Porter, uh, Tiernan and Shouty. I mean, it, to me, those were the guys more than anybody that was just solid from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. And I and you I mean, you can all, I think you could even throw Justin Varner into that conversation as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, we could name everybody on the roster. So, yeah, uh, I I won't ramble on here. So, yeah, (laughs) but I won't argue with any of those. Uh, So with that, we're going to take our two martini lunch. So after the break, we're going to reveal the results of the preseason predictions that were made by us and a few of our friends. That's coming up right here on Western Reserve Radio. Advanced Podiatry has been making happy feet in the Mahoning Valley for 35 years. Our offices are located in Cortland, Champion, Austintown, Columbiana, and Howland. Our Howland office has relocated to 8601 East Market Street in Howland Corners. Advanced Podiatry offers sports medicine and treatment plans for all ages. You can also request an appointment online by visiting our website at advancedpodiatry.com. Advanced Podiatry, where surgery is always a last resort. And we're back. This is the Dump and Chase podcast on Western Reserve Radio brought to you by Advanced Podiatry. Uh, So before this past season started, we decided uh, me and Justin were going to make some predictions on what we thought was going to happen. Uh, And we decided to uh, reach out to a few of our friends to help us out with that. Uh, So 
for anybody that needs a refresher, what we did was you made three bets, uh, what we called the safe bet, then the long shot, and then what we called the trust fund bet. Uh, and that essentially was if you just had an obscene amount of money that it did not matter if you lost it, you know, what would you bet it on? So ba and I basically assigned points to these once the season was over. Um, so the safe bet was worth one point. The long shot was worth two points. The trust fund bet was worth three. So uh, coming in last place, and it's kind of sketchy in that that he even got the one point, but we'll give it to him. Uh, unfortunately, Mike Glenn. He got one point for his safe bet. That was, we will have an incredibly fun and exciting season. And when we do this next year, um, I'm going to uh, amend the rules a little bit that any bet you make has to have a quantifiable, uh, something you can point to on a stat sheet or something to say definitively yes or no. I mean, that, that's kind of subjective. Yes, we had a fun season. We're going to give it to him. His long shot bet, uh, we will get to the Clark Cup finals. Uh, that's a no. And his trust fund bet that Justin will get on the ice and skate around one of the skate with the team after the games. Justin, did you skate with the team after any games this season? No, no, I did not. You might as well have had the, that after skate party at Satan's house because that's how cold <laughs> it would have had been there to, uh, to have me actually on ice skate. I can barely walk on dry land without tripping. Skates, no. <laughs> All right. In third place, that goes to uh, Teddy Zamuda. That would be Teddy the Larger. His safe bet, by the time the season is over, he still won't recognize half the players on the team. Again, kind of subjective, but I did reach out to him and he said he did, in fact, recognize everyone on the team by the time the season was over. So no points there. His long shot was that the Phantoms would be a more disciplined team and will spe spend much less time in the penalty box. Yeah, pretty much uh, was the case. Uh, that's an actual stat we can point to. Uh, yes, uh, you know, if you go by average per game, uh, the Phantoms were much better this season and yeah, spent a lot less time uh, killing penalties than they did the year before. Uh, so he gets two points for that. And uh, his trust fund bet, the Phantoms will win their first Clark Cup this season. That is a no. So, <laughs> so uh, Teddy comes in second with two points there. Now we had a tie with three points. First up is Bob Schaefer. Uh, his safe bet, the Phantoms play the entire season. Uh, he gets one point for that. Yes, the Phantoms and the entire United States Hockey League completed a 62 game schedule. Playoffs have gone off without a hitch so far. Uh, so he gets one point there. His long shot bet, the Phantoms make the playoffs. And of course, that was the case. They weren't around very long, but he gets two points for that. Um, his trust fund bet, the Phantoms led the conference in play, will lead the conference in playing time led. Uh, that was going back to when I was tracking how much time in a game a team led. They were tied. They trailed. I stopped doing that about halfway through the season. Um, but I assured Bob that uh, Dubuque led that category by a mile and Youngstown did nothing to catch up to that by the time the season was over. Yeah, I think that one is safe to say how it would have turned out. And I will give Bob credit. I, I would have flipped the um, the playing the full season and making the playoffs uh, <laughs> uh, the way things were going uh, last season. Uh, I, I think getting a full season in for the Phantoms and I think for the rest of the league is actually kind of uh, an impressive feat. So tied for second place is uh, you, Justin, uh, also with three points. Your safe bet. The Phantoms will be much better than last season. We went over that 17 win improvement, 37 point improvement. Uh, so you get your one point there. Congratulations. Uh, your long shot bet. Uh, two players will break the 40 point mark. Uh, you ended up getting that, uh, of course, uh, Adam Ingram and Trey Taylor, both breaking 40 points. So you get two points there and, uh, your trust fund bet, uh, the Phantoms make the conference finals. Uh, no, nope. <laughs> nope. Bombed out there. You, so you end up with three points Uh you got, you got two out of your three picks. Yeah. Two players making 40. I just bumped my mic. I heard that. Yeah. Okay. I'll start over two players, uh, hitting 40. I, Guess is you know uh, a good prediction to make the fact that our offense didn't improve that much uh, I guess means that we kind of dropped out in secondary scoring so well I will say in your defense when you originally made that bet there were players that we thought were going to be around this season that ended up not but then I scaled it back at one point before that yes. from 50 to 40 so yes uh, I guess that was a good call on my part yeah, so in first place and uh, getting first place by virtue of being the only one in this group to get the trust fund bet, 
Uh, that would be me. So uh, I win the uh, preseason prediction uh, competition here. Uh, my safe bet, Jaden Grant name, will be named team captain. Uh, of course, that was I got my one point right the first game of the season. Uh, so <laughs> I was carrying the early lead uh, all throughout the entire year. Uh, my long shot bet, the Phantoms will make it past the first round of the playoffs. That was a no. Uh, <laughs> so didn't get that one. And my trust fund bet was uh, the Phantoms would go 500 or better against Chicago. I put that on there and I'm like, there's no way that that's why I put it. Cause I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen. Sure enough. The Phantoms went better than 500 against Chicago. I just thought it was because, uh, when you say trust fund, you automatically think of Chicago and the Robins. <laughs> so subliminally my mind went to Chicago with trust fund. And yeah. So, um, but yeah, this is something, uh, we'll definitely do again before next season. I may do like a Google forms thing where anybody can jump in on it probably have to lay down some ground rules. There was a little bit too much uh, subjectivity in some of the predictions this year, so I might have to lay down some ground rules. But uh, by the time next season starts to roll around, I'll, I'll be putting something out that anybody that wants to get on this, get in on this, can get in on it. So with that, we're going to step away for a minute. And on the other side, we'll hand out some well-deserved thank yous. This is the Dump and Chase podcast on Western Reserve Radio. Dump and Chase podcast is the unofficial fan podcast of the Youngstown Phantoms, but it's not always about hockey. Do you, have you ever played golf? No, uh, you should see me on the driving range. It's scary. I, I haven't played in a few years, but I think the last time I played, I shot like an 83. On uh, nine or 18? On uh, nine. Still not bad compared to me. Yeah. I mean, it would have been 80, but the windmill kept getting in the way. The Dump and Chase podcast every Wednesday at 506 on Western Reserve Radio. And we're back. This is the Dump and Chase podcast brought to you by Advanced Podiatry. Um, so certainly with the end of this season and then looking forward to the offseason and everything else, one thing we definitely want to do, there are many, many people we want to thank. So starting out right off the bat, the Phantoms organization, you know, us getting press passes this year, having having the organization trust us enough to give us that level of access uh, I mean, for us, for the show was just incredible this year, you know, starting at the top with Andrew Goldman, who's I mean, you know, he supported us from episode one um, and we're at episode 76 now. I mean, he's been there for us since episode one. Anytime we've ever needed anything, he's been there for us. You know, huge, huge thank you to Andrew. Kelsey Morton and Megan Elishek, uh, you know, heard both of them on the show. Both of them were big helps to us this season. Um, again, just anytime we needed anything, any goofy idea we had or anything else, they were more than happy to roll with it. Um, so, I mean, just right there at the top, I mean, you know, we wouldn't be able to do as much as we've been able to do this past season without those three. No, um, I mean, Andrew has always been so honest with us that, you know, it's sometimes surprising. <laughs> um, and yeah, Kelsey and Megan, again, I mean, just everything they do, finding my lost artifacts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things that I, I, I've left random places in the Covelli Center. Hey, have you seen this? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, they just make things happen. So, yeah. <laughs> And then you go up into the press booth, uh, you know, friend of the show, the voice of the Young Sound Phant Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Just, I mean, the support we've had from him over the past few years. Um, of course, he was uh, instrumental with, uh, you know, helping to get us onto Western Reserve Radio and kind of having the initial conversation on our behalf, I guess I'll say. You know, the, you know, the post games with Brad trying to get player interviews and everything else, uh, you know, helping me out, helping us out all season long. And I, I, I think I tell him enough privately, but as I mean, as far as publicly, I mean, he's he's an incredible human being. You know, you know, all in all, just beyond all the hockey stuff, just a great friend to have. You know, we're very lucky in that regard. Oh, yeah. And I mean, this is all season long. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, and going into the playoffs. So I, I hope now he's getting a little bit of rest. Yeah, he's got he's got the baby. And yeah, uh, I mean, that was just, I, I think, rough timing, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, that playoff crunch. But yeah, I mean, just he's always there for us and um, there for, you know, the team. So 
Yeah. And then you have, of course, the players, the coaches, uh, you know, going down after the games to, you know, get interviews and everything else. Of course, you know, Brad was always very generous with his time. A lot of times he'd have his family there waiting for him after a game. Uh, but, you know, at, you know, every game and he's been, you know, and for years, you know, took the time to, you know, talk to whoever after the game. Players, whether they had a good game, whether they had a bad game, whether they were beat up or whatever, you know, we never got a no from a player. You know, we want to interview for the you interview you for the show. We never got a no. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, there were some times it didn't pan out, but that was not. Due yeah, to, yeah, yeah, like the yeah, the scheduling was off, and we just had to do it like a game later or the next weekend or something. But it was yeah, any anybody we wanted to talk to was willing to talk. So for everybody listening, I mean, it's just one more thing we were able to add to the show, bring everyone closer to the team, and actually get to hear the players talk and everything else. So, I mean, just that, I mean, we're very proud to be able to do that. So, I mean, a huge thank you to all of them for that. Of course, Western Reserve Radio, uh, Dave Ferris, Jim Craven, adding us to the Western Reserve family. Yeah, you know, to, you know, to sit there, you know, when we started doing this, to sit there and say, oh, well, maybe we can get this on the radio someday. That wasn't even on our whiteboard. <laughs> no, no. And uh, getting a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was that was uh, strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, Advanced Podiatry, uh, the uh, official sponsor of the Dump and Chase podcast, them jumping on, you know, supporting us through uh, since we uh, came to Western Reserve Radio course that bleeds into our 222 crew and uh sherry who when you know we found out we needed to get a sponsor and we're like well this isn't going to happen who's going to pay money for you know for us to you know do what we do you know and sherry right away was like don't worry i got this and you know she was able to help us get set up with advanced podiatry all in all it was fairly seamless um and that that was kind of the biggest thing i was panicking about because uh trying to uh sell advertising is not something I'm known to ever do. <laughs> uh, I've worked with the people who uh, deal with the other end of that, too, and you got lucky. And then, of course, well, uh, no, uh, going back uh, the 222 crew, of course, uh, you know, the Glenn family who has been, you know, great listeners, great friends, uh, you know, have helped us out from time to time. You know, the Schaefer's. Then, of course, uh, the Irwins, the Olmsteads, all of us, uh, our whole little uh, clan down there that's been together for, I mean, at least six years. That's how long I've been there. So, yeah. And, you know, hopefully we'll be here for many more. I'm sure there's plenty of people who aren't in the section that we talk to on a regular basis who I guess are, you know, honorary. Yeah, I mean, for how many months out of the year are they kind of extended family? Yeah, pretty much. Except for Mike Glenn, we might be booting him out. Uh, we can we can do without him. Ah, uh, well, yeah. I mean, we put this to a vote every season. Yeah, I know. They- <laughs> For anybody that's listening, this is more of an inside joke. I've always told Mike that if I'm ever nice to him, something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, so if, if we're going to talk about him here, I got to take a dig at him or he's going to start getting worried that we don't like him anymore. Uh. Uh. <laughs> and then, of course, finally, the listeners um, throughout this, you know, we we see most of the numbers uh, as far as people listening um, and just month to month throughout this entire season. And then especially when Western Reserve Radio came into the mix we're just seeing, uh, you know, just more and more people coming into the fold. Our numbers went were up all season. Uh, you know, we didn't have a down month. Everything just kept getting higher and higher and higher every month, all the way up to the end of the season. You know, so those of you that have been around since the beginning, uh, those of you who are new, maybe just came around this season. Without you guys, we're just sitting here talking to ourselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, previous seasons, we were happy to have spam bots uh, yeah. scraping the channel. So, yeah. Yeah. So to that entire list from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. It's this, you know, this is something fun for us. This is something incredible we get to do. But without all of you, we don't get to do it. So, um, you know, thank you, everybody, for all of that. So with that, we're going to take our final break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the episode and look ahead to the off season and what lies ahead in the run up to the 22-23 season. You're listening to the Dump and Chase podcast right here on Western Reserve Radio. And we're back. This is the Dump and Chase podcast, and that will be it for this episode. 
Uh, so right away, we will have episodes uh, coming out over the off season very soon here. Uh, like I said at the beginning, we will have the draft recap episodes. Uh, the plan right now, that actually will be two episodes. Uh, one episode will focus on phase one. The other will focus on phase two. Um, and like I said, uh, the plan is right now, it looks like we're a go that we will have some special guests to help us out uh, with those episodes. Those will be coming out um, in the next two to three weeks or so. So make sure to keep an eye out for those. We'll be doing a player interview omnibus episode. That'll be um, I kept saying all I kept saying this was going to be all of the interviews. It may be most of them. I don't know. Time wise, we'll be able to fit them all in. We'll see what works. Uh, we'll have that coming out, of course. Uh, tryout camp, which uh, looks like this year is going to be in July. So we'll have that episode. We're also doing an episode that uh, I, I guess I can leak. We already recorded. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we already have recorded. This is uh, we did an episode where we uh, did a reaction to the uh, very first episode we ever did. Uh, so you can expect that sometime during the summer. Um, we're also going to do a where are they now episode, uh, kind of looking back on the past years of the Phantoms and maybe picking a couple players from each season uh, that are still playing hockey, kind of see where they're at in their careers. Um, and we do have it confirmed that episode will be uh, we will have a guest for that episode. Uh, of course, the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack, will be helping us out with that. Uh, since Matt is one of the OGs of the Phantoms. Um, and then, of course, uh, training camp preseason games uh, once we get into September, the roster reveal. And then, you know, at that point, we'll be on to next season. Yeah, haven't heard anything on the Fall Classic yet, but uh, we can assume that will be the start of season and um, looking forward to it. And we can assume we'll hear about it a week before it starts. Uh, who, who, <laughs> who knows? All right. Uh, so again, we want to thank the official sponsor of the Dump and Chase podcast, the wonderful physicians and staff at Advanced Podiatry. For information about treatments and services offered, locations and appointment information, check out advancedpodiatry.com. Now, when new episodes come out, you can hear them on Wednesdays at 506 on Western Reserve Radio, either on westernreserveradio.com, through the TuneIn or Live 365 apps, the Western Reserve Facebook and Twitter pages, and the Youngstown Phantoms Facebook page. Now, you can check out our Linktree page where you can find all of the links to all of these places that you can listen to the show, um, including YouTube and wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Um, you can also find the links to all of our social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, but all that can be found on Linktree. Uh, the link to that will be found in the description of however you have decided to listen to this episode. So again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, Justin, any final words, anything um, on the 21-22 season? <laughs> I'm a mog, half man, half dog. I'm my own best friend. There you go. So for Justin Irwin, I'm Sam Olmstead. We'll be back before you know it for our Phantoms 2022 draft recap show. So don't miss out. And thank you for listening to the Dump and Chase podcast right here on Western Reserve Radio.